let's see a scenario a 3 year old child presented with history of generalized edema facial puffiness which mother noticed 7 days back and decreased urine output on examination no hypertension hematuria rashes or arthralgia that is no, no secondary causes of features of nephrotic syndrome urine deficit is 4 plus now the question is is it nephrotic syndrome since short history of facial puffiness edema decreased urine output and 4 plus proteinuria is there so the answer is yes in this child urine protein creatinine ratio was 6 mg by mg and low there was low serum albumin so diagnosis is first episode of nephrotic syndrome what additional investigations are needed to for completion of the diagnosis and rule out certain infections complete blood count kidney function test urea and creatinine electrolytes total protein would be less albumin already low total cholesterol is usually more than 200 mg per dl sometimes it is borderline but it is one of the feature chest radiographic and tuberculin test are performed since in our country there is the high prevalence of tuberculosis and later on we are going to put these children on prednisolone that is destroyed so tuberculosis is to be ruled out blood culture urine culture to rule out any other associated infections at times if we find some odd features so whether at onset or during the course of relapse we perform certain other investigations like C3, C4, ANA, DSDNA if there is features of nephritis to rule out lupus or IgM vasculitis or C3 pulmopathy. If there is his previous history of jaundice or hepatomegaly, so to rule out hepatitis B virus infection and C leading to hepatitis B nephropathy and proteinuria the investigations are performed ultrasound of kidneys is planned for kidney <coughs> when go for kidney biopsy just to see whether both kidneys are there one and second any underlying structural malformation of the kidneys there or not or sometimes we if we strongly suspect renal vein thrombosis then we can advise in ultrasonography of kidney let's see how do we treat first episode of nephrotic syndrome which is very important for postgraduate perspectives that the drug of choice is the prednisolone we give 60 mg per meter square per day or 2 mg per kg per day maximum daily dose is 60 mg one or two divided doses for initial six weeks and once the child achieves remission then we switch over to 40 mg per meter square per day or 1.5 mg per kg every alternate day as a single morning dose for another 6 weeks that is 6 weeks daily and 6 weeks alternate day therapy of prednisolone is advised for the first episode of nephrotic syndrome. Prolongation beyond 12 weeks of therapy does not influence with the time to first relapse or risk of frequent relapses over 1 to 2 years period therefore treatment of first episode beyond three months is not recommended recently well conducted adequately power four randomized controlled trials have demonstrated this fact which was conducted for about 800 children across four countries that is india japan uk and netherlands Prednisone is given followed by food. Usually there is no need of antacids or proton pump inhibitors or NTD is given. The many times question comes in mind, we should calculate the dose by body surface area or body weight. Ideally, dose of prednisone should be calculated by body surface area, especially in young children, otherwise under dosing of steroid will take place. However, time to remission is same, but one should go for body surface area because in some of these studies it has been demonstrated that if you treat the first episode of nephrotic syndrome with relatively lesser dose of steroid it may increase the chances of relapse use of other corticosteroids like deflagicard or betamethasone or dexamethasone or methylprednisolone for treatment of idiopathic nephrotic syndrome 
is not recommended. Now, the second case, five years old child who presented with nephrotic syndrome, well adequately treated six plus six weeks regimen two months back, now presented with fever for two days and cough. There is appearance of edema over the eyelids. Urine examination is depicted by two plus. Urine protein creatinine ratio 1.5 milligram by milligram, but there is no hematuria or pyuria. Child became afebrile and cough disappeared after a few days, but there was increase in the edema and proteinuria also increased from 2 plus to 3 plus. What does it indicate? It indicates relapse of the nephrotic syndrome that even after disappearance of the viral URI, proteinuria is persistent. Now there are certain definitions related to nephrotic syndrome. One is when do we say remission? Remission is when there is complete absence of proteinuria or trace for three consecutive or the morning sample by deep stick or if you quantitate UPC less than 0.2 milligram by milligram for three days. Frequent relapses are defined two or more relapses in the first six months after stopping initial therapy or three or more than three relapses in any six months period or over any one year period four or more than four relapses. If the number of relapses is less than this then they are infrequent relapses. Otherwise, if the, any patient categorized into this group, then it is a frequent relapse. We define steroid dependent that there are two consecutive, two consecutive relapses while on alternate days of therapy or within 14 days of its discontinuation. Normally, most of the time, relapses are precipitated by viral URI or some mild infections. Obviously, sometimes no cause is also fine, but we should follow it over a week period. If 1 plus to 2 plus proteinuria and if it is subsides in due course of time, then it is a transient proteinuria or relapse which has subsided or so. But if the proteinuria persists 3 plus or 4 plus, then we should promptly start the treatment. So then how do we treat infrequent lapsing nephrotic syndrome? The infrequent lapsing nephrotic syndrome is treated with same prednisolone, 60 mg per meter square per day, maximum 60 mg in one or two divided doses. But here until remission, suppose today you have started treatment and the child achieves remission on 10th, 11th and 12th day, then 13th day onwards from after three days, we switch over to 40 mg per meter square per day and give it for four weeks. Treatment beyond four weeks does not benefit the child in prevention of subsequent relapses. So treatment of infrequent relapse in nephrotic syndrome is daily dose prednisolone until remission followed by alternate day prednisolone for next four weeks. Another child, eight years old child who presented, who was treated with first episode of nephrotic syndrome from January to March 20 with adequate regime, but had next relapses. He, you see two relapses over six months, initial six months period, that is May to August, are three relapses over the six months period. Then this patient is categorized into frequent relapses. Treatment of frequent relapses are steroid dependent. Then again, prednisolone is started 60 mg per meter square per day or 2 mg per kg per day until remission. Then we switch over to alternate day prednisolone and gradual tapering doses of corticosteroid is done to keep the child in remission without having any corticosteroid toxicity. And this as low as 0.5 to 0.7 mg per kg for six to nine months. This is known as low dose alternate day prednisolone is the first choice. Sometimes these children patient on long term low dose alternate day prednisolone pick up the intercurrent infections like upper respiratory tract and high proteinuria. So what is to be done? The recommendation is that if you make the alternate day dose of prednisolone daily for five to seven days and if see if proteinuria disappears, it's okay. And then again, switch over to alternate day. Like if the child was receiving 10 milligram alternate day, he was in remission, picked up the viral URI 
and relapse occur, you make 10 mg daily for 5 to 7 days and once the proteinuria subsides, you switch over to again same dose alternative fashion.